Thanks for locking in with 77 Flavors of Chicago. We're your host, Dario. And I'm Sarah, and I hope you're ready to learn with us. Yeah, buddy. We talking about breweries in Chicago, Chicago's beer history. But first, did you know that Chicago was once the second largest brewing city in the United States? Brewing? Yeah. Not brewing? Brewing. Brew, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you said brewery. It's brewing? Damn. It's not a word. Uh, well, did you know it, though? <laughs> uh, well, Actually, I did. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, did you? That, well, we, we do know these things. <laughs> <laughs> I did know that. I had a, I had a, I had a better one that I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a let y'all know, uh, <laughs> the, the better uh, facts as we go along. But uh, what was the best part of your, about your week? Mm. Mm. <laughs> It's a great question. Yeah, that is a good question. I almost got scammed on uh, Gig Salad. You uh, did almost get well, barely. Right, barely. They didn't get yeah. your boy. No, they didn't get your boy. I they 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 tried it though. They tried. They, tried. they <laughs> with an effort for yeah. like th- three thousand dollars almost. Yeah, for real. Damn. Yeah. I almost, I almost got got. That would set your boy back. <laughs> back back. A whole three thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. That would set me back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that's not the that's not the best part of my week. What what was uh, what would you say the best part of yours is? Was what was your best part? I, uh, well, I gave you the worst part. <laughs> um, I think the best part mm. of the week for me was um, doing. I, we said doing this podcast last week, but for the second time in a row, you can't say that. Well, I have I have mine. While you okay, go ahead. Yours. Well, you. So, as some of you might know, I started crocheting. Mm, hey. So okay. this week, I went to my first official crochet class. Which was free ninety nine at the Chicago Public Library mm, in uh, Lincoln Park. Look. It's this wonderful lady yeah. that is retired. She was a teacher, and she teaches this class every Tuesday mm. at like four to six. Yeah, um, and it was me. And then the next age after me was like sixty five. <laughs> so thirty you get. And I had a great time. Yeah. It was a lot of like neighborhood drama, which Damn, y'all got I there. love. Like crochet and tea. That's a oh that's, yeah. Hey, it was literally good... crochet and tea and cookies. Damn. She brought cookies. You know. You yeah, know yeah. Okay. You know what's funny? You know the tin that usually you put like your grandma used to put her sewing. Yeah, stuff yeah. In? That one. That one was there, but it had cookies. In it. Oh, okay. So it was real. She was, was authentic, grandma. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. She brought a ton yeah, of yeah. yarn. Yeah. Like all the tools. People were uh, crocheting. Some people were knitting. We were talking about. You bum ass neighbors. Um, Who got one, the most tea going on right now? Oh my god! So one lady, Uh-oh. she is telling the story. <laughs> so she lives in this uh, area, right? Yeah. Like you know how you like enter uh, a gate and it's like a bunch of townhomes, yeah, and yeah, a bunch of yeah, houses, yeah. right? So she in Lincoln Park, right? She lives in one of those areas, and um, there's obviously a homeowners association, right? And this couple in the pandemic bought a house that was on foreclosure so they got it for really cheap yeah and the couple is young and they have a young kid Mm. and uh they often say we can't believe we got to afford to live in lincoln park because it was otherwise if the house was on foreclosure it would have been out of our budget yeah and the lady was like we can tell (laughs) oh wait the lady that was crocheting yes damn what the and here's why so everyone that's been living there has been living there for like 20 years (laughs) except for this couple yeah and so like for example, they've been doing the same landscaping for like 20 years yeah. using the same landscaping company with the same cost, All of them. right? Yeah. Everyone pitches in for the cost of whatever. Let's say it's like $15,000 to do the landscaping for the whole area. Everyone pitches in. This couple's like, we don't want to pitch in. <laughs> they say, this is new, new share for We time. can't afford to pitch in to your fancy landscaping. Damn. Also. And, so that's where she was coming from. Yeah. And then like <laughs> there, was a, um, there was a gap in like one of their like um fences fencing yeah and instead of like replacing it with matching panel they, <laughs> they just did a like a, a at home job they did just they couldn't to get afford by, yeah just to get by and she was like they're ruining <laughs> the area <laughs> there goes the neighborhood she didn't want to say it but she was like basically that's basically what she she's said. like these young folks moving in yeah i'm pulling up to the next crocheting class it was it was lit it is that is lit it was and then one lady <laughs> she told this one this story these people this lady goes um you know, this is our fifth Christmas in uh, Chicago. I was like, oh, nice. Like, I hope you're loving it. So she's like, yeah, we moved from Jersey. We were actually like homeless for six months when we moved because we sold our home in Jersey very quickly. And then we came to Chicago and like we c- couldn't close quickly enough on our house. So we just had to go to Europe. I was like, <laughs> so we just had to go like, to Europe. I don't think 
I literally said, I was like, I don't think that qualifies as being yeah. homeless. You know, that's, that's that's called privilege. That's good because I show you homeless. Yeah. <laughs> I, show, I show you homeless. But the ladies were lit, and I'm going again this week. And oh yeah, bringing uh, chocolate chip cookies. Maybe that's what we do on the uh, podcast. We you just go 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 about the uh, listen <laughs> the scene. Here's the thing. Your li- your local library probably has a ton of events for yeah. free. Go there. They teach languages. They teach things like crochet. I used to go to this cookbook book club that was also super lit. People would make recipes and bring them to the library, and we would all sit and eat and talk about the recipes. Rama. It was so fun. Okay. And people are like, these people have been going to this crochet class forever together, so they all know each other. I'm the only new one. I'm so, not even gonna go crochet. I'm just I'm just pulling up sockets. <laughs> for the drama. I just wanna be there for the drama. And I'm chiming <laughs> you can in. Be. And I'm chiming in too. Yeah. Ooh, girl. Yeah, literally. Tell, what's their like, name? It's like they broke, bro. Where, yeah, yeah. where they stay at? <laughs> <laughs> do the gas do the gas man be out there every week? Stop. <laughs> do the light man? Stop it. Stop it. They got paper, that orange paper on they the got, door. Oh damn. I think at the no, the, no. the season no. Uh, uh, this that, kind was, of, that was the highlight of my. That's the highlight. You, you, that know, is highlight. I love, you know, I love. I know drama. You, you love that shit. I don't love drama in my own life, but I love drama in other people. I love lives. drama on. Uh, y'all know Real House. Not oh, here's Real Housewives in New Jersey. That's my drama. I, I love to watch back. that. Yeah, that is. That's, I'd it's be the same, but this is like local. Like yeah. this is local Real Housewives we need to do this drama. We need, we, I need to be there. I need to be. I need to pull it's up. So fun. The the Cat Williams thing. This, yeah, that, that was the highlight of the week because that was the talk of the week. Again, Shout drama. out to Shannon Sharp. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dr- drama. See. Look, I, I I say this. I say this. Cat William, he uh, he he embellished some of the stuff, mm. uh, like him running a 4-1. Stop uh, reading 3,000 books in a year. 3,000 books in a year. Come on, son, stop that. Uh, but but I will vouch for him. That comedy scene, that, that comedy scene kind of reckless, man. Oop. So that's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Before I before I start my own Shannon Sharp, my own Stop Cat it. Williams, let me let, <laughs> let me. Cause I got some tea no, there, no. y'all. No, no. But we ain't gonna do that, y'all. Y'all want to know about uh, y'all want to know history. This is what y'all here for. Yeah. So let's get into it. But now I get to do what I wanted to do and toast up. We got our new thing, y'all. This is what yeah, I'm. Buddy. This is what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a toast. Uh, feature something every week, and um, this week we uh got uh, some beer from. Milwaukee mm-hmm. Lake, uh, what is it? Lakefront Brewery. Lakefront Brewery. It's part of the episode. We'll uh, tell you when we uh, get to that part. But this is their most popular can. This is the River West Stein Amber Lager. It is smooth. It is. It is malty. You loved it. I loved it. I so much, y'all. I don't even drink beer, but I had to go pick this up. Yeah. I told them, give me a, give me a sixer, and they were like, I bet. They <laughs> shit. I, so, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's, this let's ASMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Ooh, Lord crispy. have mercy. That was crispy. good. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can get my No one wants to hear these trigger mm. warning. Ah. Ooh, hold no on. No one swallows like that. Mm. So. What? Ah. Yes, they do. No. Ooh. I, no, Toxic I, I, men. I, I, yeah, no. <laughs> you know Toxic ass men. Yeah, no. Mm. Ah, you gotta you gotta do that. Oh, like a Coke commercial? No, it's not no, not like a Coke commercial. <laughs> we well, that's Pepsi. Pepsi. We yeah, maybe like a Coke <laughs> maybe like Coke commercial. Anyway, now I'm turned up, I'm ready to go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh so let's start uh this Chicago story of beer, because y'all probably wondering. Mm. You probably never wonder <laughs> <laughs> what what's the Chicago beer scene like. Well, let me tell you. So uh, Chicago beer started way back 1833. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, Chicago was a town at this point. Right. Yeah, Chicago was not uh, uh, the city yet. Right. It was a town. So yeah. small little things. This is how people got by. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they had to drink <laughs> they problems away Damn. or just kick it with people. Uh, there were two guys. One guy by the name of uh, William Haas. He was a mm-hmm. German immigrant and Swiss immigrant Conrad Solzer. You about to be bubbly on this one. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to be bubbly. I can feel it already. You saw it in my chest? Yeah, you I saw. Did, I did say. You, I saw your chest. You, you saw the. You saw the chest pop puff it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your boy was doing his best to get it get to a break. <laughs> so <sorry. laughs> um, they, they came from New York. Okay, so mm-hmm. uh, they they came from New York and they had 150 barrels of liquor with them. Now liquor. Uh yeah, beer. 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 Yeah, yeah, they had a huge Jerry calls anything alcoholic yeah. liquor. <laughs> Just like liquor. You know, it would QA at the end. White wine. <laughs> yeah. A Riesling liquor. Liquor, yeah. <laughs> Look at that going off that yak. That's what I'd be Stop saying. It. Here's the thing. We learned something. Um uh I learned something here that uh William Lil, uh, so, uh Comrade Souza, I'm sorry, he was the first resident mm. in Lakeview. 
Oh, wow. Yes. Give me wow. corn. Yeah, yeah. He was the first resident <laughs> in Lakeview. I, there's a tombstone and everything there. Wow. So he was known as the one of the first... Settlers. Yeah, European settlers uh, in the Lakeview area. So pretty dope. Yeah, that was uh, cool. I had no clue. They actually have a library that is dedicated to uh, him that, that also has um, some artifacts and things by him that is similar to that of the Vivian G. Harsh um, mm. uh, collection. collection in um, Washington Heights. So yeah. if you want to, we will go check it out. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until doing uh, some more research after the fact. It's <laughs> just weird. Yeah. So, um, But fun fact. So go check that out if That's you can. Cool. Yeah. Um, now, here's where it gets really interesting. They, they, The two went into business, right? They It was uh, called Haas and Solzer, right? Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, you, you want to tell them there's a debate about... Uh, well, yeah, so I, I read some things that, like, some people were debating that the uh, the first brewery was actually 1835, yeah. not 1833. Mm-hmm. Um, but most people agree that it was 1833 and that William and um, his buddy <laughs> his old had boy. the most <laughs> impact on the city's brewing scene at that time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that, that's where that's where I'm like, I think I'm going to just give it to yeah. you because... Regardless if it started like an official business right. at 35 and 35. Right. If they kicked it off in 33. They kicked it off in 33. Right. And that shit had to be different. Well, we could just, you know, if, if, and like the archives of the city probably yeah. have that information that'd somewhere. Be, that'd be that fun. Would be cool. I think we know how to go find it. Me and you know how to find it. If we if we write, we'll go do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go do it. Um, now, uh, 1841. This is a solid date that everybody has, right? Mm-hmm. This is Everybody know this one. 1841, uh, a guy by the name of Michael DeVersey uh, and William Lill bought uh, Haas and Solzer and started their business called uh, Lill and DeVersey. Now, right. Michael Lill. Here's a fun fact about Michael Lill. Mm. Uh, Michael Lill, I'm sorry, Michael Diversi. Michael Diversi is the guy that Diversi Parkway is named after, right. the street. Yep. Uh, also, Diverse, uh, Diversi, Michael Diversi, is he donated land uh, right around where the St. Michael's uh, Church is in right. Old Town. And that is why they built that church on that land because he donated and they wanted to honor, honor him. To the point that they even named the church after him. That's the that's the like rumor. That, that they I, named- I think it's I think I saw I saw somewhere else again. Back check. So after we done after we do these notes, I'll be going back and looking just to yeah just to see what's what's going to make sure I got things Multiple right. Multiple sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Even after the fact, you know, and found out. No, that's why. Mm. That's why. So they they named it um uh, after him. Saint yep. Michael kind of like honor him in that sense. Yep. Also, fun fact about St. Michael's Church, it was one of the uh, few church, few buildings left standing after the Chicago Fire, 1871. And up until 1885, it was the tallest building That's crazy. in Chicago. Yes, it is crazy. That's wild. Yeah, that is wild. I doubt that. I did not know. I got a yeah. dope drone shot on that page. I Go know. search for it. I did not even know it at the time. Yeah. Maybe you can find it and I can repost it. We're going to have to. Because first of all, it's a fire-ass yeah. post. Yeah. Like That was probably one of my favorite right. posts I've ever done. And the inside of the church is beautiful. If you've never seen the St. Michael Church on the inside. Yeah. There's so much stained glass mm-hmm. that is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The altar is really cool. I don't know too yes. much about Catholicism and like what the altar means or anything like that, but... Um, I love visiting churches just for like the architecture and the art that's in there and yeah. like the decorative stuff that's and it's so beautiful. Beautiful, like it, that, that. You know what it remind me of? That remind me of when we were walking around uh, Rome and walking mm-hmm. around uh, Spain. It, yeah, walking in some of those churches, you were like right. whoa. Like, yeah. and, and even in Mexico City, Mex- yeah, you walk into the churches and it's like gold everywhere or some of them have you know the stained glass everywhere just gorgeous each one has like its own character and so um there's even so it's it's almost at the end of a cul-de-sac on each side yeah and it's like in between two cul-de-sac cul-de-sac um (laughs) and so there's uh, there's a little like not park but kind of a paved park right in front of it where there's benches and yeah. people have dedicated bricks from like people in the neighborhood and uh, there's a bench to a couple that was like so, um just gorgeous yeah it's really beautiful that whole that whole area i used to park right there on mohawk uh right off of the uh the court mm-hmm. and uh walk all the way down when i had my classes at second city oh wow yeah you, memories and i and i 
I had seen the church because sometimes I was always there. Every time I had to come down uh, down there, it was a lot of people always. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I don't want to mess up the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Parking over here. And yeah. I don't know where to park. And boys, that's a mess over there. If you yeah. haven't been to uh, that part of Old Town, yeah. just a mess to park. Uh, anyway, back to uh, Lil and Diversity. So they mm-hmm. started the, their company. They named it Lil and Diversity, yep. uh, known as Chicago Brewery yeah. back then. And uh, they was... There it mm. is. There it is. <laughs> do, you, do you know what their most popular thing they produced was? Uh, I do know this one. Uh, the Lil's uh, Cream. Cream Ale. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they did uh, Porter's Stouts, and their most popular was the uh, the Cream Ale, which yeah. would later be taken over or pushed out of the popularity in a little bit. We'll talk about that. But Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, so, th- th- again, they were, they were super popular. So in... The 20 years, or not 20 years, but by their their 20th, 20th year, yeah. they were averaging 45,000 barrels of their beer. Crazy. For, per year, yeah. y'all. Yeah. 45,000 barrels a year. Now, that's a lot. That's a lot. Think about, you know, 1933. And think about production at that time of like 1861. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what kind of machinery was <sighs> producing these Pushing barrels? barrels, yeah. I mean, not machinery. Yeah, you... You hustling out there, man. Yeah. Like that that was uh that was fire. Now I got some dope um kind of information around this time. So reason why they uh Lil really got involved in this business is mm-hmm. because at the time Chicago's first mayor, uh William B. Ogden, he advocated basically, long yeah. story short, he advocated for Lil to be uh, a kind of a cornerstone to help grow this business. And that's exactly what happened. Uh and they brought diversity on because diversity was part of the four founders of that mm-hmm. of the, in that area. So uh pretty dope to see how Chicago was all still tied together yeah. at that time. It's uh really and Ogden cool. was like really involved in the business. Yeah. I mean he was he left in like forty two, but yeah. He he was in it yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, shout out to the Germans for bringing uh bringing us beer. <laughs> like, like this shit right here. Yeah, it's, this is uh, this lager. Got your boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. You want to talk? But, but now after. Well, yeah, diversity died in sixty nine. Yes, and hey, then the fire hey. happened in seventy one. Sixty nine. Uh no, <laughs> no. Shout out to not shout out to sixty nine. Yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> don't say it no more. <laughs> Uh, no, he did die in 69. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, the business, the business kept on going for a little bit. Until the fire. Yeah. Until the, until the fire. But there was some other stuff in between. Yeah. Go so ahead and talk to the in people. Bet- in between that time, obviously, um, Germans were coming into like the Midwest area, right? So you said they arrived from New York. So they came into, uh, like Cincinnati, St. Louis, uh, Milwaukee, Chicago, yeah. right? And specifically in Milwaukee, like we're going to focus on Milwaukee, Chicago area. There was a ton of boom of, uh, German beer gardens, yeah. right? Um, and you had these, like, they became kind of like community hubs. People would go to church and, you know, to the Catholic church on Sunday. And then they would, with their families go to the beer gardens spend some time there and um at one point the uh lager started out selling everything else yeah right so it was huge yeah. very popular and it was kind of taken over and Shit. obviously when <laughs> you have uh immigrants and uh people of different backgrounds there's some tension yeah. which is bound to happen unfortunately Especially this time all new people coming over doing things too? right right and and <sighs> new traditions, new behaviors and neighborhoods and stuff like that. And so there was a lot of tension and specifically this uh, group that was called the um, Know Nothing Mm. Movement, Mm. right? And their whole thing was anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic. N-O or K-N-O-W? K-N-O-W. So they didn't know nothing. (laughs) Like like for it like this? They didn't know nothing? Yeah, right. Is that that why it was uh, Know Nothing? That's a great question. It's uh, it's different. Look at your boy. I don't know what the, I don't know what the name where the name came from, but uh, they were anti-Catholic, anti-immigrant, um, and their whole point was they became political, right? And they wanted mm. they started running for offices and stuff like that, and they wanted to kind of stop these German drinking habits of uh, going to like beer gardens and drinking on Sunday and all of this stuff. That's crazy. I know it was. They did a lot of things, including increasing the price of the cost of a uh, liquor license, mm. uh, reducing the term of a liquor license. So from, instead of having it be last a year, it only lasted like three months. Wow. <laughs> I know. Could you uh, imagine that now? Boy, they no. did that now. Oh, 
No. It'd be problems. They even wanted to ban languages that were not English, so you could only <laughs> speak English. I mean, too far <laughs> from, <laughs> from now. For real. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they they uh, restricted alcohol, especially on Sunday. You could not drink on Sunday. Damn. Um, yep. It, which is, and they wanted to require Bible readings <laughs> in school <laughs> and focus on like non Catholic teaching. Wow, that's crazy. It back was very th- extreme. Back then, they was going for it. Now they ain't even trying to do that shit in, in, today. Oh, they're trying. <laughs> he said, is this is trying? Look at you. Out here. Look at you. <laughs> they're trying. He said the little, the little side eye. They're I like trying. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was a ton of that. And this was, they eventually won, right? So the mayor of Chicago was from this movement. Mm. And he started to enforce these things. And so there, there was a lot of tension and people started to actually in their neighborhoods started to mobilize and uh, they start fight. Basically, they yeah. want I mean, they wanted to put a stop to this because people were being arrested in beer gardens on Sunday with their family. Like you had the whole pe- everyone was arrested. I saw something interesting about this, uh, you know, do, doing again, doing some more research. I was looking. I think there was only one death in this whole right. thing. It was one death. It was only one like, death. But a bunch 60 of sixty injuries. Yes, yeah, sixty injuries. But the interesting thing is, is we got to remember we talking 55, yeah. 1855. Right. There weren't a lot of police right. that were that were fighting against the people. So yeah. it was more people right. than police. Matter of fact, the Cook County person, lead person, I don't think they were sheriffs at the time, but the Cook County mm. head police guy, he was in the trenches. Yeah, he was in the trenches, yeah. going back and forth. Right, and because Chicago didn't it, have no it, police, right. enough people. Police. And imagine how many arrests had to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because people were still going to the beer gardens. You know, uh, they were still drinking on Sundays, and Man. all these people were arrested. And so here I am drinking on Sunday. <laughs> For real. Um, Talking and, about that shit is crazy. <laughs> and people often refer to it as the logger riots, right? Mm-hmm. So people kind of rioted against that. And that was that was the whole Hey look it was it was crazy. I'm gonna tell you something. I I fight over this logger right here. This this river <laughs> west, this river west is good. I didn't yeah. put, look I I did I hmm. it kind of got worse, you know, because we're gonna enter like prohibition period and stuff like that. But I will say, I will say before you before we get there, okay. Because while this is going on, y'all, mm-hmm. while this is going on, Milwaukee is starting to grow. Yeah, because a lot of like a lot of censorship is happening in yeah. Chicago, and so Milwaukee was like, "We'll send you beer." Yeah, because they had at this, before then, probably what ten years mm-hmm. before, fifteen years before, Paps yeah. started right, right, and and uh, Paps got a pretty cool story. It they, is a, it they, is a, we went there. Yeah, like, we we went there to the yeah. original Paps. Yeah, brewery, y'all, yep. and it's it's amazing. Uh, there, like the little, they got the little uh, inn right there, the, yeah, tavern. the tavern. Yeah, where it's what maybe eight tables in there. Yeah, excuse Ooh, me, Lord, I'm, Lord, should we take a little break? Man, look, you know, <laughs> shit, shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> get your boy, uh, get your boy some time. No, no, I ain't. I right, look, we good. We are gonna power through this. Um, but uh, the what was I saying? You were talking about the Pap story. So oh yeah, Pap. basically yeah. it was best brewing. Was yeah. the it was two brothers and one of the brothers, Jacob, sold fifty percent of his <laughs> uh, stake to uh, Paps and Frederick. Right? Is it is his first name? I believe. And um, what are you focusing? <laughs> on? You're not your boy. <laughs> Damn, I'm down bad. What's going on? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Sorry. Jacob sold his fifty percent stake in Best Brewing to uh, Frederick Paps, okay. who then started. Paps Brewing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, then you want to tell the Blue Ribbon story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool so w- so while this is going on, we think, think about it. We 1840, kind of jumped back some years, uh, 1840-ish, 44-ish. Um, you know, Paps, Paps is doing their thing. They they out here churning out, you know, we talk about Chicago doing, what, uh, 45,000. They was doing 100,000. Yeah. You know, they was doing 78 to 100,000 barrels a year. And so they, you know, they doing their own thing, right? But they don't have the, it's not Chicago. It's not a big market. Yeah. So even though they selling a lot, but like it, it just, it's just not popping like how Chicago is. We got to, we had, I think at this point, I'm rough estimate y'all, like 20, 19 to 20 different breweries mm. go, moving on right now. Uh, and, and while that's happening, Milwaukee, Paps is pretty much taking over in the Blue Ribbon. They had to start tying the Blue Ribbon, around, hand tying yeah. the Blue Ribbon around Crazy. their bottlenecks just to show, hey, look. 
this is this is fire. This yeah. is more premium than anything yeah. out in the streets it's right like now. It's like more attentive. Yes. To. Yes, it's, you're right. And and so so that was like okay, kind of like how Maker's Mark uh dips all their bottles in, in the wax yeah. and that's that's authentic wax. That's why right. they're never the same. Right. Uh they were doing this way back then. Yeah. And they, and the competition was like kind of stiff up there because it was only a few of them so when you got a handful it was like the big three they were called, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They was fighting for space up there, but Paps had it had it covered. That's going on. That's going on before the riots, but then when the riots happen, you know, like now it's, it's, it's ramped up a little bit yeah. more. But then Chicago Fire happened. Yeah. Once the Chicago Fire happened, a lot of breweries did not exist anymore. Yeah. And I, I think 19 yeah. of them burned down. Right. That's why I'm getting that number from. 19 yeah. of them did burn down. And so this <clears> gave an opportunity for Milwaukee breweries to kind of bloom yeah. and blow up yeah. really and because now they had this whole new market that was so close that they yeah. could just easily uh Jump in. export to yeah. and so they did and that kind of gave milwaukee the opportunity to become a brew capital yeah um and yeah so I mean, think about it. you got 20 years from and I'm, I'm saying 20 years from 71 to about 93 because uh 1893 was another significant moment for the mm-hmm. beer uh movement now Blowing up, they didn't. They didn't pretty much got the Chicago market untapped because, yeah. like, it's hard for Chicago to like bounce you're back. You're rebuilding a whole right. city. You're prepping for the World's Fair. Right. You're doing and a they ton has of work. Mar- Mil- uh, Marquette, Marquette. Shout out to Marquette. Uh, Milwaukee had things going. Yeah. Already. Right. So for them, it was like, all right, bet this is this is easy to jump in and fill a void. And while they did that, the the fair, uh, the World's Fair did happen, 1893. And when this happened. Uh, the now this is this is really cool about yeah. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Reason why it's really uh, proud that Blue Ribbon they won yeah. the best lager, pre- most know. premium lager Crazy. at the World's Fair. Yeah. So it, that that was amazing. So they yeah. won that, but also also during the time that that those twenty years, Schlitz had become their number one competitor. Mm-hmm. And actually taken over for number one in the world, right. uh, in, in the in the country, uh, the best brewery. So they had to start shipping out. And Schlitz, their motto at the time was they were the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Right. And so if you if you look, we went to the Schlitz area park, yeah. park, and they have a whole park where that used to be right there on the river. It's only like three or four, maybe four buildings that are still standing that used to be the packing houses, the brewery yeah. houses, things like that. I um, mean, they all got names on there. It's it's that entire, like, river area, and it's across the river, so it's on both sides. It's called, uh, like, Brew... I can't... Like, the historic brew district. Brew district. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. then you, you have Paps on one side, Schlitz, Schlitz on the one side, and then you have the newer brewery... <clears throat> excuse me. The newer breweries, like Lakefront Brewing that yeah. we went to, that is... Uh, Wine and Kugel. Right, right, and but Lakefront is a more recent brewery. Yeah, uh, from 1987, yeah. I believe, is when they started, and they are doing like revolutionary things in brewing. They've inc- incorporated fruit. They did the first gluten free yes. uh, beer. They did um, the what? What else did he say? First gluten free beer. Um, they couldn't verify one of them, but they it's they, the fruit it's one. The they, fruit couldn't, one. they couldn't tell if they were the first or the second to do fruit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they also the place is beautiful. Yeah. They saved um, even the like the lights in there. The light yeah. fixtures are saved from a brewery that was meant to open during yep. the world the first world war that never did because of like. Um, restrictions on German uh, beer gardens. Right. It was a beer garden that was meant to open that never did, and the owner bought the light fixtures and fixed them and put them in his Amazing. brewery. And you could sit there so and see cool. the brewery. They got all the accolades there. Go talk y'all shit. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, what's really cool is the staff there, too. So, like, the staff, fire. Fire. They were they were so uh, accommodating. We had that, Super. We had that mic on, so they they saw, hey, uh, Justin, shout out to Justin. He's a bar, t- bartender there. Yeah. He, um, uh, mm. excuse me, he was, uh, <laughs> boy, this, but this, a bubbly ass beer, I tell you that much. Um, You're just a bubbly guy. Yeah, yeah, hey, I am. <laughs> I'm a bubbly guy. Um, but he was so dope. He he introduced us to the owner. Forgot yeah. his name. Apologize, but um, he took time to uh, talk to us and uh, talk his they stuff. Call him big guy. So yeah, big guy. Yeah, that's what I know him as. He's a <laughs> big guy because he's like six seven. So he is Crazy. a big guy. Uh, but they do tours of tours? the space yes. that you can go to. You can tour Paps. You can tour the that brewery. Uh, Definitely recommend doing both. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to do all the tours, but 
I really want to go back and oh, do well, them because the they're hand. super. Yeah, they're they look beautiful. The Paps building was it's like a castle. Yep. Like it's so so beautiful. Yep. The whole the whole park area over there Very is just cool. fantastic. They got yeah. the big paps hanging over the streets. So nice. It, 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 the thing looked like a castle. Y'all and got it's to go right there. by that uh, sports stadium. <laughs> the sports stadium. Milwaukee Bucks. Sports Pfizer. Field. Uh, yeah, sports, sports field. Sports Come. arena. <laughs> the Bucks play there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Brewers. The Brewers. Yeah. No. 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 The Bucks. The Bucks. Everybody knows that. That's silly. That you you almost had my ass. Come. You know what? What? Where the Brewers are though? Where? You know the chalet where the mascot used to sit. Go ahead, coin. It's inside <laughs> of Lakefront Brewing. Uh, cool thing about that is when you go in there, uh, you can write your name all up in there. Yeah. It is filled with signatures. Like Soup, it's got yeah. to be at least ten thousand signatures yeah. written all over that thing. So they demolished. The Field Stadium Arena where the Brewers <laughs> used to play. And the Field so, <laughs> Stadium Arena. <laughs> and so they took the chalet where the mascot used to sit and uh, they they preserved it inside of the brewery. I ain't even gonna hold you, man. I love Lakefront uh, Brewery. But it was it was hard to just hear that fact about the Brewers. I wanted to say, fuck the Brewers so it was so bad. You could still say that. <laughs> no, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna just, they, they nice people. I ain't got nothing against y'all. It's the just, bre- it's just. The Brewers? No, no, no. The people that work at Lakefront. What, what they got to do with the Brewers? I mean, they in Milwaukee, shit. <laughs> and I'm sure they like the Brewers. Probably. So, y'all good people, though. <laughs> y'all y'all good people. It's just... It's just it's just circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, uh, you have a dope fact to I uh, have, share. I do have one little out of... Oops, one little... Um, you good. One, I have one little out of place fact that yeah. I want to share. I didn't know where to stick it. That's what she said. Hey, hey. Um, <laughs> that's the first one of the year, I think. <laughs> but did you know that the first lager that was brewed in the U.S. was brewed in 1840, mm. and it was brewed in Philly. Mm. And the guy, uh, his name was John Wagner. Mm. He brought. He was Bavarian. He brought the yeast that brewed that beer with him from Bavaria. Oh wow! How did? They saw he was on a boat, clearly. Clearly. And uh not a plane. Not a, not at that time. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this beard. So this beard is River yeah. West. Got your, got your boy. <laughs> ben. Hey, River West. I just realized. Yeah. We just we just talked about how people don't say River West is a neighborhood. <laughs> but it was was it River West? West. River yeah, West. Yeah, River West. Anyway, sidebar. But that was pretty dope. Yeah. You know, we we gotta go to Philly now. Right. We gotta go to Philly and uh and see what they doing over there. See what they what they got going see on. See what they talking about. And no, I don't even drink beer like that. You've but already this, said that like 17 times. You're trying to say your boy and lost his conscience now. I mean, your eyes are, are starting to no, no. slowly <laughs> flutter, do flutter no. faster. No, no. <laughs> You're squinting a little bit. You say, come on, your make it through. Your nose is a little red. Stop it. My nose don't get red. It does. Too dark for that. Yeah. That's not true. No, see, yeah. Yeah, I do. My nose does do get, get red. red. My, do, my yeah. nose do get red. Yeah. I got, I got, um, I got uh, my DNA test results that you confirmed that it gets red. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Anyway, uh, we back in Chicago. Back in Chicago, uh, you probably like, yo, but y'all gonna talk about Chicago's beer scene? Uh, Hell yeah, yeah, we are gonna talk about it because it's still a dope beer scene. We yeah. have what 160 plus uh, breweries in the Chicago land right. area. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah, pretty dope. Yeah. So uh, uh, the only reason Chicago isn't on like the top lists of breweries in the u.s it's only because all most of these lists are per capita yeah. and because our population is so large we don't qualify to be on those lists because if you have 160 breweries and 3 million people that's you know what i mean yeah right but if you have 15 breweries and your population is 100,000, that that's a lot you know what i mean like that seemed like a lot yeah so that's the only that's the reason like chicago doesn't fall on most of these lists but it probably is like one of the top number of breweries I, in general I like thought, just number of breweries i think i think chicago ranks in the world yeah yeah it does i think yes for sure the most if we talk about in this chicago land area to be fair you know i mean so we include everybody but um chicago land area i think is like up there it is in in the world and there's a ton of microbreweries there's a ton of incubators for brewers in chicago so there's a lot of that shout out to uh goose island uh because they were one of the first Big big ones yeah. uh, that came back, and that was very recent. We're talking eighties, you know what I mean, nineteen yeah. eighties. So, um, shout out to them, Revolution Brewery. Uh, we talked about the Mars Brewing Company yeah. uh, over There's there. There's so many, you so can't, many. You really can't do it justice by naming yeah. any. So no, like 
there's a lot of big players and then there's a lot of like microbreweries that are just making really great beer that's um like more niche i guess yeah or, yeah now fun fact uh to close out here um there during our episode at uh, pilsen uh go back and check out the pilsen episode because we talked about uh brewery and beer you know there uh, mm-hmm. uh pilsen is short for pilsner yeah uh from uh czechoslovakia over right. there so uh pretty dope but also in Pilsen, right on the edge of Pilsen, close to uh, Chinatown, Chinatown. Uh, there was this, uh, way back in 1860, there was this brewery that popped up uh, pre-fire that was called Schoenhofen uh, Beer Company, Brewery Company. And they were famous yeah. for a long time, all the way until after the Prohibition. I think 1950 is when they ended yeah. uh, business. And, and they, were, they were huge during the Prohibition. Uh, fun fact: They rumor has it that there's still a well uh, in the building where they hid and secretly had beer that they were brewing during the, uh, prohibition. During the prohibition. Because you know how did things stay yeah. around that long right. after the, during the prohibition? They survived. Yeah. And speaking of surviving, uh, you can go and see that very building that is being used by uh, I think a couple different companies as a, mm-hmm. a business space, uh, but. That is the last and only remaining intact brewery from pre-fire. Wow. Way back when, y'all. That's crazy. So you can go check That's that really out. That's really cool. Yes. Yeah, uh, speaking of surviving prohibition, there's one other cool story in Chicago. So Sibel uh, is the name of the brand, okay. I believe, S-I-E-B-E-L. Oh, they were, which they, they were known for Edelweiss beer. Right. The Edelweiss beer, yeah. So they, there was an inst- like the Siebel Institute, which a lot of people, they teach brewing i don't fucking know yeah. um i don't know what the technical term is <laughs> Brew- brewers, brewers. brewers. <laughs> no no not the brewers that's milwaukee <laughs> but <laughs> did you know how they survived prohibition oh. they made bread instead of oh, beer. oh, oh. you use the yeast for yeah. that and they <laughs> wow isn't that cool hey man they get yeah. they, that's a good that's one that's how they survived for the prohibition period really they just made bread that's smart as hell yeah they was like, fermentation. what y'all doing in here? Uh, nothing. Sourdough? Nothing. <laughs> what you, we good. What you mean? We just smell just real beery up in here. No, no. sourdough. <laughs> Trust us. Look, here's the bread. And they threw it at them. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they had to catch the bread. <laughs> damn, this is bread, yeah. y'all. <laughs> okay. Damn, that's okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Chicago made a way. That's a, that's a pretty, today's episode was pretty fun because that was Chicago story. But also the story of Milwaukee. Right. You know? I mean, you can't really tell a Chicago beer story without touching on Milwaukee. You really can. And I feel like we, you know, you can you can really deep dive into each one of the breweries' history because they right. played a huge part in the, the beer scene in general. Yeah. So, like, we just did, like, an overall arch of a story. So, right. you know, you can the talk origin. about, like, what did... Uh, uh, Paps do like right. just Paps story, and we yeah. could talk about that for an hour. Like P- we love Paps PBR yeah. down here. We love yeah. PBRs down here. So uh, we love we love Goose Island three one two. We love yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. We and, and honestly, I, you know when we were making this episode, I was like, do I talk about Goose Island or do we make it a beer story? Yeah, and uh, I elected not to talk solely about Goose Island because. I think there's more to uh, there's more to what we got going yeah. on. So yeah. Um, yeah. So if you did enjoy this episode, uh, please send it to someone you love. That's the best way to support us is to share our content. Uh, follow us on Instagram and all social media. Seventy Seven Flavors Shy. And if you did not enjoy this episode, drink a beer yeah. if you hey. can. Hey, shout out! <laughs> shout out to our Rue West Stein uh, Lakefront River. Brewery. Yeah, buddy. That's what I mess with y'all heavy. So mm. been burping See all you episode. next week. Yes. Peace. Been burping all episode. Yeah, I was burping. <laughs> <laughs>so much for listening to today's episode and we hope you loved it and if you could please follow us on social media at 77 flavor shy on instagram facebook tiktok and twitter if you have any ideas or deep dives that you'd love us to do please contact us at media at 77 flavors shy that's the number 77 flavors and shy for chicago.com if you like visuals Please subscribe and follow and watch us on our YouTube channel at the same thing, 77 Flavors Shy. Or search 77 Flavors of Chicago. If you would like to support us monetarily, go ahead and click that Buzzsprout link in the description of this episode. And as always, 
We gonna see you next week. Peace.